Lord to God. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Before the reading of the Bible, I would like to read a text to the brethren that says the following. In order for Christ to inhabit by faith in your heart, in order for in order, in order for you to be based in love, you can perfectly understand with all the saints what is the width, the length and the height and the depth and to know the love of Christ which exceeds all understanding. Amen. We stand up this morning in order for us to know a little bit of this love of Christ, this love of God towards our lives, we're going to use the parable of the prodigal son, which is in the book of Luke, Luke 15. Luke 15, where we're going to read a couple of verses. We're going to read the verse 23, 23, 24. Luke 15, verse 23, 24, 27, and 32. If the brethren can do the projection. Amen. There it is. Luke 15, from verse 23. And the word of the Lord says the following. And bring the fattened calf here and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Verse 27. And he said to him, Your brother has come and because he has received his safe and sound. Now, verse 32. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. The church may be seated.
television. The father he makes a declaration. And the father here is in the parable. He represents the heavenly father. Our father in heaven. And Jesus and God. And the God in the parable here represented by the father. He speaks of a he speaks of a son who is dead. And then after his death, he was lost. The father says that the son was lost and then he died. No, he says that the, the son was killed, uh, the son died, and then he was lost. In the back of the cover of a song of our songbook, there's a song that, that says the following. I was dead. I was dead, but I thought that it was alive. The son was dead. He was lost. The death that the father was speaking about was not about the physical death. He was speaking about the second death, the death of the soul. And when man dies distant from the father, the man suffers the damage of the second death. He's lost because, because now he is under an eternal condemnation. And when it happened, When was the day of the death and of the loss of this young man, this the younger son? He died on the day in which he left the presence of the father. He lost himself on the day that he went astray from the path was not after when he was from on a distance distant land he died on the day when which he left the house of the father and got lost when he lost his path and the, the sister of Lazarus told Jesus Jesus if you were here you my brother would not have died because Lazarus died because Jesus was not present. So when God is not present in the life of man, man is dead. But the Father, He comes and speaks to all His servants. This son of mine, He was dead. But He was became alive. And when was the day in which this son was revived? The day in which this son was revived was the day in which he said the following, I will get up and I'll be with my father. And I'll tell him, Father, I, I sinned against heaven and in your presence. And I'm unworthy of, be, of being called your son. And when was he found? When he once again entered on the path. Who is the path? I'm the path, the truth, and life. No one goes to the Father but through me. So when he entered on the path, the Bible says that the father heard from a saw him from a distance. My brother and sister, God, he, he looks on the path, which is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And when we enter on the path, 
the Father sees us from afar. The Son, He lived a period with the Father. He used to live in the house of the Father. And he didn't lack anything because the Father would provide for him for all his needs. And the Son alight the table, the table of the Father, the bread that was served in the house of the Father. But the Son didn't like the Father. The son didn't know the love of the father. And many times we are like this. We are in the house of the father. We feed off of the table of the father, but we don't know the father. We don't know the love of the father towards our lives. On the day in which the son entered into the path, he entered because of the bread. He came back because of the bread. It was not because of the father. In the house of, the, of my father. What does he say? In relation to the bread. There is abundance of, uh, of bread. And I'm here dying of hunger. So he went back because of the bread and not because of the Father. But there's a good thing about this. Because through the bread, he was able to know the love of the Father. Who is the bread of life? It's Jesus. And how do we know God? Through Christ Jesus. Because he says the following. Because whoever comes to me, who comes to me sees the Father because the Father and I we are one the Son the Bible says that he lived uh, recklessly with what the Father gave him what is to live recklessly he began to to waste and he began to destroy and deteriorating everything that the Father had given him. And the Bible says that the Son wasted. He wasted everything that the Father had given him. And the Bible says and he says, he says the following, I'm, I'm no longer worthy of being called your son. My brother and sister, I'm going to ask you one thing. Is Are there former son or daughter? Is there a former father or mother? This man didn't know his father. But because of the bread, on that day, he really realized who his father was. And the Bible says that when he entered on the path, the son didn't run toward the father. The Bible says that the father was the one who ran towards the son. He broke, we can say, all the protocols. The right way was the son to run towards the father but no, the father was the one who ran towards the son. And the Bible says that he was, he was hasty. You know why? Because our father is, has haste in saving you. That's why he ran. And you know what else the father did? He embraced
when do you embrace someone who is coming from a trip what are you doing you are you are welcoming that person you're receiving that person so the father was welcoming the father was receiving back his son a son that was unworthy a son who was was not an honorable son with his father that was disrespectful with his father that had, didn't have a good character with his father that didn't have a good conduct with his father that's why he says I'm, I'm not worthy and in it in this who sees you the grace and favor and the mercy the mercy of the love of God the father receives a son who was not even worthy of being called his son but the father received him and it's written a verse in the Bible that says whoever comes to me whoever comes to the father whoever comes to Christ I will never throw him away so in other words whoever comes is welcomed by the father is embraced by God and whatever abounded sin overabounded the grace and the favor and the mercy and the love of God and we can see my brother and sister the grace of God the love of God is greater than all of our sins so he says my son was dead and now he's alive he had been lost and he, he was found and there he was found and that son he was received as a son he came uh, with no honor but the Bible says that the father said put in put new garments on this young man put in new garments it speaks of salvation put no sandals on the feet of this of my son now he is going to wear the gospel not of the law he's going to wear the sandals the grace because now is experiencing of my grace of my love of my favor of my mercy towards his life today he's going to receive a ring today he's going to be honored in the house of the father today is going to have an identification son My brother and sister, what kind of love is this? If this is not love, my brother and sister, if this is not love, He wanted to be uh, a, a simple worker. He wanted to go back to the house of the father and be um, a day laborer. 
I'm going to receive uh, my daily payment. I'm going to stay there for a little while and then I'll go back. The father didn't want and he didn't he receive his son as a day, day laborer, as a servant. You know, you know why, my brother and sister? Because it is written in the Bible. The servant never stays forever in s inside of his house, but the servant stays forever in the house. The father didn't want his son just one day on his house, but he wanted his son every day in his house, every day in his presence. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, do you know what he says? I am with you, I'm, I am with you, until the finish of the centuries. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And there is a text, my brethren, that speaks of this love that I'm trying to explain here. And they gave him the power of being made children of God. To those who believe in his name, do believe in the name of Jesus. So now you have received the power. You are the Son of God, Son and daughter of God. And the Lord is receiving you here tonight as a child of God. Who has done the reception, was not a servant, was not a slave, was another brother, was another person. But who has received the son back to his house was the father himself. And before he arrived, the father was already waiting for him, expecting him. And there is one inter interesting thing, my, my brethren. It is that the father, he says to his servants, and then one of his servants speaks to another brother and says kill the calf you know why they had uh, the fattened calf and why at that time and uh, a while ago, they did this in Brazil, and since I am from a little older, I've seen my father doing this kind of things. When they killed an animal, it was so that it would be killed in a special occasion, on the birth of a, a son, for example, on a wedding or even an occasion like this on which a close relative, in this case a son, was far away from an, on a far away land when he comes back. So then it was reason for the fattened calf to be killed. And the Bible says that without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And a text that I spoke about yesterday was tie, tie up the victim of the feast so that a feast, in order for a feast to be celebrated, so that the Father could then celebrate the return of his son there was a victim there was a death there was a sacrifice the fattened calf here represents our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ so that the feast of salvation in order for it to be celebrated, 
celebrated for you, for me, for each one of us. There was a victim. There was a sacrifice. There was a death. A price will pay for yours, for mine, for our lives. The return of that man to the house of the Father for the presence of God uh, costed a sacrifice. My brother and sister, your salvation, my salvation, our salvation costed a sacrifice because we were dead and lost. But the Bible says that God loved the world in such a way and sent Jesus, His only begotten Son, so that whoever believes may not perish but have eternal life. Perfect, perfect love. Who can explain this? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And came this 
brother and his father and killed the fattened calf because he received him. S healthy, cured of every evil, cu cured of every infirmity. The Bible says that was saved. Received him saved. My brother and sister, you have received tonight in the house of the Father. S saved you, were saved and healthy. Because the Father, through the fattened calf, he cured you and he saved you. He saved me from the eternal death, of, of eternal condemnation, eternal perdition. And this is the love that God desires that you know tonight. The great love they has towards my, to yours, to our lives, offering an innocent, a fat calf, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to deliver me. I am who, I am guilty of the death. So the blood of an innocent, to deliver the one who was guilty of death. Jesus dies because we are guilty and that's why he died because we are guilty because in order for me to be alive in order for us to live God died Jesus died and that's the greatest demonstration of the love of God towards our lives and know of one thing you have received to Tonight in the house of the Father, safe and sound, and now we can begin to rejoice. You know, because that fe the feast was the feast of salvation, of the return of the Son in the house of the Father. And there's a text, and there's a song that says the following This joy will never leave. Because this feast of salvation begins here and continues in eternity with God because there is a joy in heaven. There's a celebration in heaven for a sinner that repents. Amen. Let us stand up and we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Hallelujah. We praise our name, Lord, for a sweet presence in our midst. There's no way for us to express so great love. This great blessing that we feel, Lord, in your presence because you sent your Son to forgive our sins, Lord, to restore us, to purify us, and most importantly, Lord, to prepare us to live with you in eternity. That's why, Lord, our hearts, they rejoice because we know that it is good, it's wonderful, Lord, to be in your house and glorify your holy name. Lord, how wonderful it is, how our heart beats with joy of knowing that you are your unique God, you are living God, you are a wonderful God, you are God who is with us every day, a, re a God that renews our faith, a God is going to take us to live with you and we love you Lord, we love you very much Lord, we praise you because your presence is with the Lord. We praise you, you love you, God, for everything that you have done, and especially for preserving us in your presence. And because we can be with you in eternity, Lord. We love you, Lord, for everything in the name of Jesus. And the Lord has shown a man that had received land, instrument to work on the land, seed, oil. He received everything. The Lord had given me all, everything at his disposal. But he arrived here wounded and complaining. The Lord has shown to him that, that his complaint uh, should not be at no worth because the Lord had given him everything. It's just that you were not, you didn't use. Uh, the tools that were given to you in an ad adequate way. 
and there was an oil that he needed to use you know to put on his hand in order to prosper and protect his hands but he used everything except the oil the blessing my brethren the blessing of the Lord is what enriches and does not add on pains the oil is the anointing of the Lord and your the Lord has made available to your life use the anointing of the Lord allow the Lord to guide you and conduct you allow the Holy Spirit to instruct you and you are not going to need to make so much effort and everything else will prosper do not complain because the Lord has received you here tonight and you are sane and sa sound and safe and the Lord has also shown a woman and the love of God in the life of this woman is withering it's not because the Lord has stopped loving her but because she has not allowed herself to know greater depth the plan of salvation that God has for her life but tonight she left this place understanding that, lo that God loves her and has prepared for her a place in heaven for her a place in eternity for her amen glory to God The church may sit down.
Lord, we thank you for your great mercy towards us, Lord. Thank you for everything, for your, for your message, Lord, for your work, Lord. We thank you. Take us home in peace. In the, uh, give us a uh, victory. Deliver, deliver us from any violence. Lay your hands upon us. In your name we say, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit to be upon the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. The brethren can sit down. You, my brother and sister, who are with us and desire a prayer, a clarification regarding the gifts that were uh, spoken about the word of the Lord, if you need a prayer, remain where you are, raise your hand, and the brethren will here be able to give the proper assistance. We have service late at night, Saturday at 7.30, Sunday at 10.30 in the morning and Sunday at 7.30. Oh, you have also early dawn service. Vigil 